trees. So I need to make some artistic trees for a project and uh, these ones are great. They can move, they can be crooked, they can be weird, they can fly. They can even be used in the painting. So yeah, let's make some trees. So the first thing I'll do here is create a plane, go into edit mode and then I want to merge all the vertices. So I'll press M and merge at center. Now we have a single vertice in the middle. Then I'll extrude those things up and we'll start creating a sort of tree trunk for our tree here. And I'll just branch these things out and these will become sort of the branches of our tree here. We're just looking to create some sort of organic uh, structure here and just warp everything a little bit to get a little bit of that organicness back. Okay, and here comes the magic. We're going to select our tree here and then we're going to jump over to the modifiers panel and we're going to turn on a skin modifier. Now a skin modifier will add some geometry and thickness to our edges here. And that's super handy. And if we jump back into edit mode and turn on ghost mode, we can see our edges are still in there. And now we can control the thickness of each of these branches by pressing control A and then shrinking everything in. And if you're using the soft selection modifier here or the soft select option, then you can do multiple at a time and we'll just shrink everything in. So it becomes a little bit more thin like this, but everything's a bit too square right now. So I'll also add a subdivision surface modifier to our tree here, like that, boom, then it's a bit more rounded. You might get these little glitchy areas here. You can fix those by just sort of moving them sometimes or, you know, moving the individual branches like this and giving a little bit more space. And we can still modify our tree here so we can bring it back to the center here, doing something like this, add an additional vertice here in the middle, do another branch, something like that, all these things, and control A to scale. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to take our branch trunk thing here and do a circular array of it around the center here. So what we'll do is we'll collapse these modifiers here and turn on an array modifier. And we'll turn off the relative offset and then we'll create an empty. And then the idea is to use this empty to array our object around. And here's important that your tree and your empty has the origin in the same space. So we'll jump to our tree here and we'll go to object offset turn it on and select our empty. And then now if I start rotating my empty, the tree will array in a circular way. So I'll take my tree here and give it a few more arrays. I think I'll create five. Then I'll take my empty here and just rotate it around like that. And we're starting to have that awesome tree shape there. And then I can just jump in and start modifying uh, my tree trunk here. So I'll do something like this. And this is really the awesome part of this method is that you always have access to these vertices and you can still manipulate the overall shape of the tree. So I'll find some sort of pattern here that I like, some kind of distribution. I think maybe I'm going to bring everything in like that. And a feature I often see lacking when people are making trees are the roots. And roots are a really great thing to put on your trees because it just makes your tree so much more flexible. Because quite often, you know, dirt and earth has been ripped up in the ground and roots just help, you know, really add the realism to the trees and can look really nice on their own. So to add to our things here, I'll just start extruding out of the bottom here and create some sort of root system. And I can just do the same as I did before. Cool. And now I'm more or less happy with the overall shape and look of my tree. And then I kind of want to adjust some bigger movements in the tree. And we can once again come to the modifiers panel here. So add a modifier and I will add a simple deform modifier. Now the simple deform modifier is really neat. It allows us to kind of just twist everything at once. So by default it's set on twist and I'll set it to twist along the set axis here. And then we can create this twisting motion around the tree. And it just creates that natural twist that we see quite often in trees. And it just looks really, really neat. We could add a additional simple deform here. Go simple deform. And then let's turn on the bend modifier instead. And this is really cool because now we can start bending our trees in different ways. If you're starting to get any kind of nasty deforming using these modifiers, then you can take your subdivision modifier and just pull it all the way down. And then things will just sort of pop back up because then the subdivision is happening afterwards. To bring back some of the organicness of your tree, you can go to modifiers and then you can add a remesh modifier. So I'll jump over to the voxel size here. And this is really just trial and error to see what works for you. I will try something like 0.2. You might be getting a little bit of floaty things. You can always just you know dial it down, but that will increase the overall uh, mesh density here. Then now we're starting to really get that merging of the different uh, branches here in the tree. Now I am more or less happy with the overall shape of my tree, uh, but I do not like this repetitiveness we're getting from the array. So I think I will apply the array. I will grab the array here, select it and apply. 
So that becomes applied here. And then now I can jump into edit mode on these different branches, turn on ghost. And then I can adjust the individual branches here. And I can really just create a lot more organicness by just twisting and turning these different areas and really create a different sense of the tree. We could even have the remesh modifier be on at the same time. Like we, we can see live how the trees are affecting each other here. And what's great about this method is that we can just grab a tree, duplicate it and create a whole new tree by just twisting and turning everything. And it's looking s sad, huh? But it looks cool. We can also add some materials to a tree. So we'll grab over in our panel here, switch it to the shader editor. Then I'll create a new material. Then I'll grab some textures. I like to use textures from texturehaven.com. This is where it gets really interesting. I'll put in my diffuse here and plug it into my base color. Then we start seeing something here, but we don't really have any UVs on our mesh. But if we have the Node Wrangler installed in Blender and press Control T, then we get a little texture coordinate and a mapping node here. And we'll plug in the object instead into the vector, switch from flat to box, and then we'll blend everything a little bit. And boom, we have nice tree texture on our tree. And then we can bring in a roughness map and a bump map to enhance everything. Easy peasy. And then I'll come over here because I want to have some sort of control over the scale of the texture. So I'll create a vector math and switch this to scale. And then I'll plug that into scale and set everything to one. And now we have one slider for controlling the scale of our tree texture here. And it just works on this tree as well without having to do anything. Our tree is looking pretty good so far. But we also want to give it some life. So let's add some leaves to do this. We'll create a new plane, and then we'll create a new material. We'll call this our leaves. And then you have to find some sort of leaf texture, preferably with a transparent background. I have a texture here, a sort of branch texture that looks like uh, this, where the black parts are actually an alpha. You can see the alpha here, like so. I'll take that and plug it into the alpha, and then I will grab my principal PSDF, jump over to the material properties, and then turn on the blend mode alpha clip because I want a harsh transition and also do the same for the shadows here. So now if I view my material, then the black part should be completely transparent and I can adjust the clip threshold like so to make everything a little bit more sharp like this. Then I'll put in my color here to my base color. Then I'll extract some normal subsurface and bump from our leaves here. And here we have our leafy branch with some subsurface on it. So now what I want to do is I want to use this to create little clusters that we can scatter around our tree. Then I'll grab everything and subdivide them once. Then I'll go over to the randomize option here and just pull everything out just to give it a little bit of randomization. And let's make sure to shade smooth and duplicate it around on my tree. Just making the branches roughly point out the way they were pointing out before. Scale them a little bit here and there for variation. And congratulations, you're done with the tree. I will just make a couple more in another scene and uh, just, you know, scatter them around. And, uh, you know, some are crooked, some are weird, some are big and sprouting with life. And uh, maybe I'll just export some things for Photoshop and then I can start painting on top of that. And uh, that's becoming dark very quickly. That's kind of frightening. Why is it becoming so dark? What a mood kill.